I'm known as both. And this is Granny Rocks. And uh, this is James Maynard. Uh, yes, and I'm otherwise I'm, known as Sweet Baby James. And I'm going to introduce you in a minute oh. to introduce <laughs> us. But I got everything mixed up. So tonight, you know, as we are moving towards the Thanksgiving weekend, I want to talk about loss. Hmm. You know, when you lose something that you feel like you can't replace, you can feel inconsolable. It's sort of hard to feel thankful. So I want to devote this show to talking about what can you do when you lose something that mm. you feel like you can't replace. But before we get into that, this is As James Said, and you were quite right to... Yeah, this is the you. Granny Rock Show. It is. And uh, happy that you could join us. This is our opportunity every week. On Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Pacific, to hear Granny share her, with her wit, her wisdom, and her very uncommon sense. So take it away, Granny. Thank you. Thank you. And Catalina says good evening. And Hi, she sent a heart and uh, other loving things. And we send love back to you. Thank you so much for already showing up and letting us know that we are broadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a good thing. So I have been thinking about this a lot lately, you know, the whole theme of loss, because we are going through something very big ourselves. But it's not just us. I mean, think about, see, what I, I want to talk about irreplaceable and inconsolable and how they connect and what we can do about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So remember when you were a child, or if you've had a child, you'll see that. Uh, Todd says hi, and hi, Todd. hi back, Todd. Um, when, let's say, the child loses a favorite toy, mm -hmm. it, it starts crying. It carries on. It becomes inconsolable, meaning there's nothing that you can do to make it feel better. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just, you say, okay, well, I'm going to give you a shiny new toy. I was like, I don't want that shiny new toy. I want my puppy toy. I want my whatever it is, right? That's what I want because that is what I have my association of love with. You give me a shiny new toy, it's like, ugh. <laughs> uh, you know, there's no history with that toy. Tracy says hello and sends a heart and a bow and heart you. back to you. So often, <laughs> just because you offer a child something that you think is better, hello, good morning. Oh, wait a minute, I have a translation going on here from Ali uh, to two beautiful hearted people. Good morning to you, Ali. Mm. Well, thank good you so you. much. And uh, there's a wave, too. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. So, you don't want that toy. So, now, it's true in life, too, that I don't want a shiny new man. I want my old scruffy guy that, you know, I've been through the wars with, right? Yeah, you got a history with. Exactly. Elizabeth said hi and sent a heart and we hi, say Elizabeth. hi back and send love back to you too, Elizabeth. So, yeah, or, you know, there are other things that are like that. Now, people have been experiencing incredible losses. Now, every day people lose. I mean, you lose a mate, you lose a parent, some people lose a child. Um... You lose a pet who's been with you. I hate to call them pets. It's a canine or feline companion or I don't know what other kind of a bird companion. Somebody or something that you have a real history with that there's been love with. You know, what you're losing is love, you know, and it's hard to feel consoled because that shiny new toy isn't going to give you that love. Island said, love you, Beth and James. Love mm. you too, Not Island. To you, so Island. good to see you. And Shannon says, hello. Well, hello, Shannon. Hi, so Shannon. happy to see you tonight. So anyway, what happens is we become inconsolable when we lose something that we feel we cannot replace. Now, that, there's a lot of losses that take place in life that feel like we cannot ever replace what we lost. And... Um, and sometimes we can. Pat said love. 
Thank you, Pat. Back at you, Pat. Oh, yeah. And I think I see a doggy. It's really small. I don't have very good vision, but I think I see a doggy in yeah, your little, yeah, yeah. whatever you call that, avatar or something. So, anyway, um, people up and down this river have lost their homes in fires. And it's very difficult to ever replace those homes. Karen says, love you, good to see you, mm. and love you, good to see, see you back too, at Karen. You. Um, so then we feel inconsolable. We cannot be consoled. Do you understand? To, to console someone is to give them something that compensates for the loss. And it can just be love. We get consoled by love. Um, and we can be consoled by, well, maybe this kid really likes the shiny new toy better. And it says, woo, yeah, I like that. Forget that old one, right? So maybe you are not inconsolable after all. Maybe you can find something. Now, what do you do, though, when you are inconsolable, when you are losing something you feel you cannot replace? Now, this is very relevant to the Thanksgiving weekend in the kind of weird way because it's hard to feel thankful when you are in the midst of grieving something mm. and you feel absolutely inconsolable. And we may laugh at kids who carry on about that, you know, that little dolly that's, what did they call it, rag doll or something that didn't cost much to begin with, but that child loves it, and we may think, oh, that's so cute or so sweet or something, but we all go through this ourselves, and that's something we all need. So before I go on and start talking about what we can do about it, I want you to think about maybe something that you have lost lately or that you lost a long time ago. Or someone or someone, something, or you're afraid you're going to lose or is about to be lost. And think about that and feel the inconsolability that nothing will ever be able to console you because nothing can replace it. And that's why we become inconsolable, because we cannot replace that. I cannot replace this relationship. I cannot replace that toy. You know, as a child, I cannot replace this career or this dream or this hope or this election or... Or this home. Or this home. So, as you're thinking about your own, I would like to share with you that Sweet Baby James and I are going through something and I am going through inconsolable grief because we are giving up our home. And our home has... Of course, memories in it that we will never get back. But mostly, this home is just everything I've ever wanted in a home. It's got beautiful wood on the inside. It has the rushing river. It has the view of the mountains. It's in the forest. It has privacy. It is gorgeous. I love this place. And I feel inconsolable. And that's why I just keep crying. Because no matter what I look at... It's like, oh, yeah, that's nice. Oh, yeah, okay, that's nice. Nice, you know, shiny new toy. Who cares? <laughs> I want this. This is what I want. This is what I truly resonate with. So let's say that happens. So I'm just giving an example. Well, the first thing to do, if you cannot replace something that you are losing, and let me explain, we have to give this up because we live too far away from everything else we need. It's uh, over an hour to get to town. There's no real medical services up here. There's no not you know, stores. We can't get our needs met up here. It's time for us. We're getting old. Okay, so we have to do it. It's not like I want to do it. It's like we have to do it, and I know that we have to do it. So I say to myself, if I can't replace this, I shouldn't try. Now, that may seem kind of like duh, obvious, but it is not duh, obvious at all. Because we often try to replace something which is not replaceable. And we're trying to console ourselves with the idea that we can replace it. So, for example, some of you know that uh, last um, February I had to put down an elderly dog who really couldn't handle life anymore. It was just no good for him. And uh, I was 
inconsolable. I mean, I was inconsolable. And to this day, I still miss that dog. We did get another dog, the shiny new dog, the shiny puppy. The same breed. Same breed. A very similar look. Oh, my God, but it's not the same dog. See, I know the difference between that dog and the other dog. But I did try to find something else, but I, of course, tried to replace him as we often do when we lose a dog. Now, how does this apply to the house, and how does this apply to your life? Well, when I go looking for a house, I want something to replace this. Well, I'm not going to have the rushing river, and I'm not going to have the forest of giant evergreens, and I'm not going to have the acre and a half, and I'm not going to have the view of the mountains from our you know, backyard. And I'm not going to have these walls and this house and this space and all. Oh, I mean, we'd have to be millionaires to replicate this somewhere else where you actually were close to things. So, and I know that in my heart, that's what I want to do. So I compare everything that I'm looking at with what I'm losing. Sound like a losing for Saturday. It's a losing. I've already lost the entire war right because <laughs> i cannot replace that so i'm sort of beating myself up here <laughs> slapping myself around i don't mean beating myself up <laughs> slapping myself around and saying okay beth can you accept the fact that this place cannot be replaced no anyway i feel just like that little kid i want my dolly now you can say, well, wait a minute, you can love something else. Okay, so let's say, don't you love the idea of being close to the hospital? You know? That'd be a yes. That would be a yes, you know. I love to be able to get our needs met, go get food when we need it. Uh, the other day, my uh, cell phone died, and we went to a store. Because we were out of town, we were looking for a place to live. And there was a store there, and you went into the store, and I, I, could <laughs> I could replace my phone. I'm near all the... I have a toothache. I need a tooth pulled. I'm not going down there. I'm sitting there with this tooth. You know, I should just say, well, can't I love the fact that I can get my, you know, get medical care? No, it's not the same. I can love that I will have that, but I don't love it. I don't love having my tooth pulled <laughs> or my body fixed. I don't love it with the same passion that I love the rushing river or the beautiful woods and all of that. I don't love it. I don't love it. So that being logical is not helping at all. So I've been thinking. And this is my tip for you. First of all, don't try to replace. Oh, Jose says, God bless you, both of you. And God bless you, Jose, God bless you, as Jose. well. So here's what occurred to me. What else do I love? Okay, so first of all, we're looking at places that have woods. They're not the big conifer forest with the giant trees with the trunks like this. No, they're not. They're not. But I said, oh, can I love this? Todd says, I can only speculate what those things might be because I am not experiencing that right now. One thing I have lost that can never be replaced is my father. But I am at peace with that. Well, Todd, yes and no. You know, you have found other things to love. And that is really more to the point than that you actually are at peace with having lost your father. You are not being consoled around your father because that is an inconsolable grief. But you have been consoled because you have found other things to love. And mm -hmm. you are right ahead of me because that is really, really the point. So we went to a place where I wasn't going to have the land or the Russian River or the huge conifers, But it's kind of wooded. And I said, you know, James, this reminds me of back east, when I lived back east, and uh, this kind of woods. And I said, well, I love this too. I'm trying. 
you know, I'm trying to love that too. But I had this thought, really, about music. I love to play the piano for people. And that isn't the same kind of thing at all. I can't even compare it. Of course, I have a fabulous room to play the piano in in this house. I mean, it's like a concert hall. But Todd said, thank you. I understand what you mean. I'm so glad, Todd, that you understand that because we have to have compassion for the inconsolable, irreplaceable losses. And yet we have to build the way you have in your life uh, towards loving things that you can have. And so I thought about the piano. I love to play the piano. And the only way that I can play the piano for people up here, essentially, is to play on the internet, which I do every Thursday night at 7 p.m. In fact, Todd does the live streaming for us. And um, I play the piano for an audience, an international audience. And I love doing that. But I really love to play for people live and in person. And so I am telling myself, I cannot replace what I'm losing, but I can embrace something else that I also love. So we had a conversation today, sweet mm -hmm. baby James and I, about where should we go, where should we move that will not replace where we live now but where I might be able to find a live audience to play the piano, if and when COVID ever goes away. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because now everybody's on the Internet. And by the way, we broadcast Dreams of Peace improvisational piano music every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time, and you can always watch it later. And it's very uplifting music. And it's beautiful music, and it's stirring music, and it's moving music. And so as I'm playing, I'm thinking about being somewhere where I can find and have an audience that's live. Now, does that mean that I'm going to get it? No. And that's really, you could say the joke is on me. How do I know that if I move that I will find a live audience of people who want to hear me play. I really don't. But in the meantime, I can focus. So what we did is we looked at some of the places where we were thinking of moving, and we said, where am I most likely to be able to find an audience? And we picked out two of the three as good possibilities. And one place that we had picked, which is more like this, like what we are leaving, I'm trying to, re we'll never replace what we have here anyway. It will always be a poor second to what we have here. So um, we're letting that place go. And we are looking for a place where I could potentially play the piano for people. Now, what will happen if four or five months from now, we actually find a place we've moved. We've sold our house, by the way. We're closing escrow in less than two weeks. But the people are going to let us stay here until we find a place to live. Um, supposing in a couple of months after we've moved, I find out that nobody wants me. That they don't want to hear me play the piano live. I do. Yeah. I ain't nobody. I already have that, though. I already have that in. <laughs> well, I will cross that pain when I come to it. Right now, I'm focusing on something that I actually love that is not a replacement for what I'm losing, but is something different from what I'm losing. I spoke to a woman just yesterday who's home burned down in these terrible fires. Ours did not. And she said she does not want to rebuild on that same land because it would be too painful for her to compare. But she would like to get a different piece of land and build again. Mm. So in a way, she is saying something similar. She can't replace it and she doesn't want to 
try or pretend. She wants to build something new. That's what we're trying to do. Guys, when you feel inconsolable because you can't replace something, a person, a friend, a lover, an animal, a child, a career, a dream, don't try to replace it. Try to find something else that you can love and put your heart and soul into that and into making that happen. And that's my tip for tonight. So don't forget to like or love this show, comment. If you haven't commented during the live show, you can still comment and I will write to you later as soon as I can. And don't forget to come back next Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time for Granny Rocks, for our sweet baby James and me. Oh, Karen is saying, I'm having similar feelings about moving from my forest retreat. Moving on to a new adventure. Yes, Karen. Yep. Yes. Let's do it. Something new and different. Let's do it. Let's say, yes, it is different. And that's the beauty. Because if it's too similar... It might fail. Right. I don't want another James, right? I don't want another James anyway. I just want the one that I have. But go. if it should ever happen that I would actually outlive James, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? So I love that spirit, Karen, and I my heart reaches out to you. Todd said, great message tonight. Love you. And let mm -hmm. us be Back at you. thankful. Yes, thank you, Todd. We love you, too. And let's be thankful if we can still dream of something different, if we still have that with us. Kat says, I am building my new life with my disability. Yes, yes you, you go, girl. are. You go. Exactly. Let us not get stuck in the inconsolable grief. Let us embrace what is possible. Let us grieve away. But let's embrace what is possible and stop trying to replace what we lose. Right. Island says, thank you. Mwah, mwah. Thank nice you, too. Coming. And don't forget to tune in to Dreams of Peace, improvisational piano music. I just <laughs> play whatever comes to me as I'm playing. And we love you, and we really appreciate your support. And happy Thanksgiving, no yes. matter how much loss we are facing. Yes. Let's be thankful that we can still dream. Mwah, yes. Mwah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Bye-bye okay, for now. Bye-bye.